Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. So check it out. The D6 Squad has merch now. We got hoodies, tees, mugs, whatever you need. Check it out. Link in the description. What's going on, YouTube? Diggy546. And today we have very, very special guests. Some people that really do the film session stuff at a really high level. Fireside Giants, Alex and Anthony. So happy for them. So happy for them to be here with me today. Uh, how are you guys feeling? Pretty good, Diggy. I really appreciate you having us on the channel, talking Patrick Sertain out of Alabama. Um, I've been watching your stuff for a while now, too. You do some awesome content, and uh, you know we're just trying to keep up with everybody in this community that we've been a part of. Um, really building together is super awesome. I know a lot of our listeners are probably the same across you know our channels and then Chris and a couple other big ones too. You know, it's just really, really cool to be able to make just really great content for all these amazing people and the platform that they've given us. So you know, I'm really happy to be here and breaking out some film with you guys. Yeah, super excited. Thank you for having us on. You know, we connected really on Twitter. Um, well, we connected once before on the Entertainers live stream, and that was a lot of fun when I was getting harassed while I was in Disney. That was a good time. Um, but yeah, we connected again on Twitter. We were talking about Rashad Bateman. Um, I really like the take you had on him, and I figured, you know, why don't we just, you know, sit down and actually talk about some draft prospects, and hopefully we can continue to do this leading up to the draft. We definitely uh, can do some more work going forward. I'm going to be having a lot of live streams, a lot of mock drafts, a lot of kind of draft content, and you guys are definitely welcome on the channel. But today we have Pat Sertain out of Alabama, number two. He is a top 10 caliber kind of prospect. Him up, He's up there uh, kind of 1A, 1B as the corners with Caleb Farley. He's six foot two, 195, so he's got great NFL size. Uh, he's got solid strength. He's got great speed uh, for his size. I mean, a corner that height, you usually are looking at a 4'5 guy. I think he would run a 4'4 if the combine was happening, you know, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so. A really intriguing prospect. He's got uh, four interceptions in college, but as you know, these top tier college corners, they usually don't throw too much towards him. So uh, we're going to look at a couple of clips and uh, we have the entire, uh, pretty much the entirety of the LSU versus Alabama game with Joe Burrow and all of the top graded receivers that are going to go in this draft uh, on LSU. So he got a lot of great competition today. And let's just run through this first clip. Uh, I'll play it through first, and then you guys can give your comments, and we'll just comment as we go through. So here's him at the bottom of your screen, working against Terrace Marshall, a first-round, second-round kind of player. And um, as you see, he has very good reaction time. His hips are very fluid, uh, and he's able to really stop and start at an elite level. Yeah, I mean, what I really like about him from the start is how conservative and patient he is. And he's watching Terrace Marshall's hips, really watching at what, what he's doing with his release package here. I know he's so good at keeping on the hip of the wide receiver and not letting him stack. You know, that's something that Anthony will point out as the clips go on. Um, when these receivers are running go routes, they're trying to stack and get over the cornerback to get that leverage. But Sertain does a really good job of sticking on that hip. And something you'll see consistently, he always manages to get his head back to the football, back to the quarterback. That's something okay. that we saw with Eli Man Eli Apple. <laughs> Well, Eli Manning was, was taking advantage of guys like Eli Apple. But Eli Apple, you know, we ever, we always saw him. He would never turn his head. He would always get beat on those those deep balls, and it was really a big problem, which is why the Giants moved on from him, um, along with his mom and the issues there. But essentially, you know, when it comes to Patrick Sertain, you know, he has the fundamentals down. He's a three-year starter, starter, conservative style of play, but he's very, very athletic and quick. And when you're playing in a, in a pro-style defense like Alabama and you're a three-year starter, you know you're getting a ready-made NFL player. That's why I'm a little bit higher on him than Caleb Farley, because Caleb Farley has the tangible traits. He has like that 9-3 speed, 9-2, yeah. oh, sorry, 4-3, four, 4-2 three, four, <laughs> yeah, speed. Four, yeah. So, you know, when you're talking about a guy like that, you're, you're really looking at his potential and not what he's already done, because he has been a little injury prone. He has missed some games. Uh, but Patrick Sertain is a refined, great prospect that you can plug and play immediately in your defense. Yeah, I would definitely yeah, I don't know if I'd go as far as to say that I prefer him to Caleb Farley, because... I feel like in that sense, um, Alex, it's when you're looking at a higher ceiling or a higher floor. You know, we, you and I have that conversation all the time. And with Patrick Certain, I definitely see the higher floor. But with Caleb Farley, I see the higher ceiling. I always like to reach for the stars. So that's personally for me. And we'll, you know, we'll do a breakdown soon, Alex, on Caleb Farley, and we'll have more discussions about that. Maybe we'll have Diggy get involved with that as it's well. It's a good debate. It's a good debate. 
It is yeah, a good definitely- debate, you know, who's cornerback one in this draft class. But what I like about this particular clip, you know, you see great man coverage. But what you pointed out, Alex, is, you know, the way that he rides his hip, right? And he doesn't give him that track back inside because you mentioned that when receivers, you know, after the release, they have to get back on the original line. And that's when you stack. And that's how you win your routes, really, is just to stack on top of the cornerback. And that's when you can really break it whichever way you want and really have the cornerback leaning. He really doesn't give him that opportunity. He keeps him outside, squeezes him towards the sideline, and he doesn't give him the opportunity to get over the top of Patrick Certain. So it's really perfect man coverage. And, you know, that's a really good rep right there against a really talented wide receiver who should probably go in the back end of this first round. Definitely. And uh, one thing that I noticed, too, as I watch his tape, you rarely see him have to completely open his hips and run with the receiver. Uh, he's very, you know, there, it's really a talent to be able to backpedal or even kind of uh, side pedal um, at an elite level while someone is basically running uh, sometimes go routes down the field. Sometimes he's backpedaling. So that's something that is really going to be able to help. It's going to really be able to help him at that next level. Uh, and Terrace Marshall is no scrub, as as Anthony just pointed out. This guy is going to be uh, ending a first round kind of guy. He could be someone who goes to Baltimore or. Uh, it'll be really crazy if you make it to the Giants' second pick. But uh, if you guys don't have any more comments on this particular play, we can go ahead and move to the next play. Um, I do think that the one thing I want to point out is how he keeps his eyes on Terrace Marshall's eyes, you know, how, where where he's looking. Because like I said before, he's really good. You're going to see it throughout, throughout the clips. He's really, really good when it comes to turning his head to the football. And the way he knows the ball is coming is because he waits to see what Terrace Marshall's eyes are doing, where his head is turning, when it's turning. And the second he sees that head turn on that comeback route, his head's already in motion. You know, we're going to see it throughout. And that's really a special thing that he's able to get his head his head around. And it's going to lead to more interceptions at the NFL level. That that ability, especially when you're running go routes and you're hip to hip with a receiver, not letting him stack, when you turn around, you're going to get some interceptions. You're going to get some turnovers. So I really like his fundamentals when it comes to that specifically. So uh, at the bottom of the screen here, you have Sertain uh, matched up, and he's going to drop into a cover three zone, and he shows really great recognition and zone coverage to come up and make this tackle. So I'll play it really quick uh, so you all can see. And, it, and it's amazing the, the, the amount of space that he covers. Uh one thing that I, I saw on this play was look how comfortable he is literally around 10 yards away from uh, where Moss is coming across the field here. He's so comfortable to be able to let him catch this ball and take a few steps and still be the first one there to make this tackle. Yeah, and, and right off the bat from the release, you can tell he's already playing in zone because if he was playing man, he'd be looking at the receiver. Um, but since he's looking at the quarterback, he immediately flips those hips, you know, really, really good fluid flip, uh, hip, uh, flip there. And he, he just, he just basically, uh, pedals back into the secondary. And like you said, like that reaction timing, I mean, that receiver didn't even try to block him. So it was pretty easy for him to get around. But again, like, you know, he's, he's a good form tackler. He has good fundamentals. You know, that's kind of the argument that I would make is he would be a better player right off the bat than Caleb Farley. He might not have the ceiling, but he's a better player. And if you're at 11, you know, best player available. And he also has the ability to move into the slot. Caleb Farley is specifically does not play in the slot. He plays on the outside. He doesn't move opposite fields. He really has only played a majority of snaps on the right outside hash. Um, so he's very, very limited into what um, he can do right off the bat in, in the NFL. That's why I think he's he's the second option. He needs a year to develop. I think Sertain comes in and he's an immediate starter um, with, with a solid floor. But I would agree with Anthony. Caleb Farley has the bigger ceiling, but you don't know if he's ever going to get there. That's the, that's the question. Well, how do we how do we get in there, right? That's from coaching, and that's what I want to point out on this play specifically. Um, when you look at this pre-snap, it looks like a cover two zone, and this is a disguised coverage. You know, it's a cover two, and it looks like they jump into a cover three, but they actually have a safety play man coverage on Jamar Chase, which is understandable because it's Jamar Chase. That lo- it looks like that's what's happening here, right? So um, they're double teaming Jamar Chase, focusing all their attention on him, trying to take him out of this game plan. Um, but what I like here is that. You know, we're seeing, as Alex mentioned, this is a pro style defense, right? This is a disguised coverage here. This is a very complex look, a complex coverage look. And Patrick Sertin is comfortable playing in that. He's used to that. So when he gets to the NFL and he starts playing, let's say hypothetically he were playing for the New York Giants and he would get into Patrick Graham's scheme, Patrick Graham runs disguised coverages 
nearly every down. Everything is a disguise. You never know what you're getting with Patrick Graham's defense. Go watch the film against the Seattle Seahawks. That's why they won that game, because everything was a disguise. He would show cover three, and it's cover two. He'd show cover two, it's cover three. He would make it look like zone, but it's really man. That's what he likes to do. That's Patrick Graham. So when you talk about a scheme fit, right, you're trying to find a prospect who fits a need but also fits into the scheme, that's where you actually do look at Patrick Certain. You say he's got the experience to fit right away into this into this Giants defensive scheme and already be a solid player from day one. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting debate. A lot of people think that uh, Pat Graham wants to go back to a uh, bump and run man kind of coverage, but uh, the the personnel last year forced him to play more zone. What uh, it actually made the defense better, I think, because of all of the zone disguises. And you can't really disguise man as well as you can disguise zone. So maybe a corner with more zone experience, with more experience, as you said, and these disguised defenses might be the better corner uh, as far as just a scheme fit. Yeah, that's a really good debate, honestly, to have just whether the Giants will go back to the, you know, man coverage kind of schematics with Patrick Graham like he did. In Miami, he played 50% cover one, you know, which is a man covers uh, system. So, you know, in my opinion, don't fix what's not broken. You know, don't try to mess with the things if it's not broken. The Giants had a top 12, top 10 defense last year. The secondary was their weak point. But if they get a guy like Patrick Sertain, they have Xavier McKinney coming back. They have Julian Love. Um, they have Jabil Peppers. They have Logan Ryan. You stay, stick in your zone. Stick in your zone scheme. They already know the terminology. They already know how to disguise things. I think you just build on that. And Patrick Sertain is a really, really good player to utilize in his own scheme. We, we're going to see it later on. We're seeing it right now. He has the ability on those on cover, cover three zones. And when he drops back into coverage, he has the anticipation. He has that athleticism to break. Um, and his reaction timings are elite. You know, when you're a zone coverage corner, you need to have re, uh, elite reaction timing so that you can break on those balls. Um, but I like how he has his, his body to the middle of the field and he's squeezing the sideline. So if, you know, if the receiver decided he wanted to squeeze that sideline and go and just go on a go route off the field, he could flip his hips quickly and just take off with him. You know, he, exactly. he really put himself in a good position, squeezing the sideline. And and really, if he wants to go inside, if he wants to cut inside on like a post, on like a, a post in the middle of the field, he has the leverage already because he can. He's already facing that direction, and he can just take off with him and just stick on his hip. So I, I liked that. That looked really good, and I think the zone coverage he would fit pretty well in it. Like Anthony said, he'd be a good scheme fit for Patrick Graham. And I also believe that James Bradbury is better in his own. Uh, how many times have we seen James Bradbury drop back into that cover three? And uh, whether it be making a play in the pass game or in the run game, uh, he's he's been very elite at, at breaking on the ball uh, and being able to change directions and, and really making a lot of plays. I, I think he probably caused a couple of interceptions uh, just by being in the right place because of his instinct. So, so that's also something to think about. Yeah, definitely. And I really think that the the debate between should the Giants stay in this disguised zone coverage defense, you know, this amoeba defense, as Eric Spolstra in the NBA, Miami Heat, that's what he would call that, the amoeba defense, right? I think that's really a good debate. Should they stay in that or go back to man coverage? Well, I think personally, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. The man coverage defense was broken, so they fixed it. And now I think it would just be counterintuitive to go back to that other coverage style defense when this one worked so well last year for the Giants you know we're all really happy with the way the Giants defense performed and we have very low expectations for the defense going into the year um so that's really you know going forward I would like to see them continue in that zone disguised defense you know that um blitz heavy zone coverage defense um and that's why I do think you know Patrick certain would be a really good fit in a, in a defense with that style and then one last piece just for the viewers uh you can have a bump and run zone defense as well uh, so we, we can also do that. We can also come up and press receivers in his own defense. Sertain doesn't do a lot of that, at least in this game, because you have a lot of guys that can just go past them. But um, you, you can definitely have a bump and run zone. Uh, a lot of people didn't like the fact that we played off so much, but Sertain is going to give us the ability to be able to come up and press some of these receivers in the NFL. Okay, so we have Jamar Chase at the bottom of the screen. Uh, matched up against Pat Sertain, which is is a very a very uh elite matchup between two elite prospects. Mind you, this is 2019. This isn't 2020. Uh, and Sertain is a year behind Jamar Chase. So let's let's watch this play first. 
just to see what happens. We're going to see a double move at the bottom of the screen, a little physical, and Jamar Chase is going to end up getting behind him. So um, one thing that happens is he kind of gets lulled to sleep. And when he's not able to comfortably stick with guys uh, in his backpedal, sometimes he can kind of get surprised. And <laughs> this is what happened in this particular play. Yeah. yeah, I mean, basically what I'm seeing here is this is the problem with watching a receiver's eyes. This is what happens when you when you are wanting to get your head turned around and you're going for to make a play. What he does here is that at, when he thinks this, he thinks this is a comeback route because Jamar Chase looks to his right, right there. He, when he stops, when he stutters right there, he thinks he's going to turn his head. So Patrick Sertain ends up turning his head to see where the ball is, but it's actually it's actually a double move. He actually ends up using his leverage, just kind of sliding his hands over um, and taking off down the field. But you know that that's what happens when you're really trying to make a play when you're looking at the wide receiver's eyes and not his not his legs, not his hips, and he gets caught looking. And basically, once he turns his head, Jamar Chase just hits him with just hits him with a double move, and he's gone. Um, that's kind of like you're just being overly aggressive. And I think he learned a lot from that play. You didn't see that when we were looking. You know, I think that was an anomaly. I but because I, he he's Jamar Chase, you know, he's going to beat you on. Sometimes you're never going to win every single matchup. But it was really a. Uh, it, it, like he just lost that rep, and he, I think he thought it was going to be a comeback route. Ended up being a double move go. Yeah, Jamar Chase is is probably the best uh, stop and go route runner I've seen in this draft. So this this isn't a regular, but it's it's also something to consider when you're when you're thinking that he's going to be playing against NFL receivers next year. Yeah, I mean, really what I see on this play is just a little bit, you know, of over-aggression. He, he sees, you know, uh, Jamar sit down. He doesn't even think, oh, maybe this could be a double move. He really just wants to grab on and undercut the route, maybe try and get an interception on a bad throw. But, you know, this is Jamar Chase. You know, he's he's an excellent route runner. He's an excellent wide receiver. He's got the ability to stop and go, as as you mentioned. So this is just over-aggression, you know, um, probably like Alex mentioned with the eyes, probably a little too trained in on what Jamar Chase is trying to sell him. And, and uh, Patrick Certain bought it, and he shouldn't have. He should have gone to a different market, so to speak, right? So um, that's really the, the thing. You know, you want to play that bump and run. You want to get up personal and get physical and really hold on to wide receivers and try and hold them in place. Well, sometimes if they're very quick, they can outrun you. They can maneuver it, and they can get right by you. So this is just, like I said, a case where he was just a little overaggressive, and that happens. And like like we all all, all mentioned – this is a really talented wide receiver, but this is something we have to look at because in the NFL, he's going to be going against a lot of very talented wide receivers. Definitely. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. Um, Jamar Chase is an elite talent, but you're going to be going against elite talent every week. All right, so for this next play here, we have Sertain at the bottom of your screen again. I think this is a number six. I think he's working against Terrace Marshall again. And uh, you're just going to see him be able to kind of recover. Uh, from a, a pretty decent release from Terrace Marshall and get back into the play uh, almost like nothing happened. So uh, you're going to see him turn his hips and just really realize how explosive he is and, and just being able to recover and, and making it look so easy. Yeah, I mean, he, he does a really good job here. Uh, right off the bat, he squeezes him to the sideline, and if he wants to cut inside, he squares him. You know, he, he has his whole frame kind of squared to Terrace Marshall. So that way, if he tries to cut inside, he can easily just attach to his hip and then follow him. Um, you know, that that's just really showing the fundamental basis here. But also, like, he matches up in speed. You know, that's that's the big thing with receivers at the NFL level. Like, a lot of them are really, really fast. And to be able to match up with them it's, with the speed factor is important. You know, he has good athleticism, but his fundamentals are just so good. Um that he does a really good job of just mirroring this route. It, it's pretty It's pretty basic. I don't even think Terrace Marshall was even targeted here. I think this is more of a decoy to get him underneath. Uh, but, you know, he does a good job just, just following him downfield and not letting him, even if it was a real route, just just staying on his hip and not letting him get inside of him, you know, really just pushing him to the boundary so that he squeezes the field. He is just so – you just see so many fundamentally sound things every time you watch him. Uh, and you just see that he has the athletic athleticism to go along with it. Yeah, that's that's what I saw as well. You know, very fun, fundamentally sound rep, even if this is just Terrace Marshall being a decoy on this play, which is kind of what I think 
Um, it's still, you know, the defensive back doesn't know that. They have to pretend like it's a, it's a real route. You know, they have to treat it like one every single play. And he does a good job here. You know, the back pedal is really smooth, I think. Um, he really gets back there and um, doesn't give him the opportunity to get over top. You know, it, it's good coverage there. One thing that I'll point out, though, which is kind of somewhat irrelevant to Pat, uh, Patrick Certain, but I'll tie it in. You're going to see on this play Xavier McKinney, New York Giants safety, gets his ankles completely broken here, uh, trying to – Make a tackle in the flat. Now, what I'll say to that, though, and tie it, to tie it into Patrick Certain is because on the last play, we were talking about Patrick Certain just being a little too aggressive while defending Jamar Chase on the stop and go. This whole defense is just very aggressive. They're all very downhill. They want to just make the play as soon as possible. That's just the Alabama culture, the Alabama defense. They're very aggressive. So when we do see Patrick Certain make over aggressive plays like we did on the last one, or we see Xavier McKinney, New York Giants player, make an over aggressive play like this where his you know he over pursues the the runner here and he gets he gets beat for it right so when we see that that's really all just ties in that's a Alabama's defense it's very aggressive and so that's something going into the NFL you know the Giants also run a very aggressive defense that's why Xavier McKinney was such a great fit the Giants are very aggressive Patrick Certain's very aggressive so again there's a lot of connections to make in terms of connecting him to the New York Giants and saying that he is a good fit with that team yeah, and I mean, this is pretty much an NFL game. You have Xavier McKinney getting duped out of his shoes by Justin Jefferson. So <laughs> this is as NFL as it gets. So I ended up having technical difficulties. The session ended up getting a little bit cut short. But Pat Sertain is an exciting prospect. He's got great reaction speed. He's got great athleticism. Maybe not as athletic as Caleb Farley, but athletic in his own right. Uh, Patrick Sertain should go in the top 10 picks. He is a, a physical guy, uh, someone who, who's not scared to come up and make tackles, someone who can stay with receivers down the field, someone who can play zone or man. Uh, we thought that he would be a really good fit in Patrick Graham's zone scheme. He does a lot of that zone in Alabama as well as man. And we think that his skill set is very translatable. Uh, also, you know, coming with that Alabama culture, Joe Judge runs a similar kind of ship as Alabama. So he'd be a good fit for us. Uh, may not be the best corner prospect on the board. Nonetheless, a really great prospect. I hope you guys enjoyed this film session. I want to give another thanks to Alex and Anthony from Fireside Giants for coming on the channel. And you guys have a good one. So if you made it this deep into the video, I'm calling you a D6 squad member. If you're a D6 squad member, you got to hit that subscribe button. You got to turn on that notification bell and listen. I make all kinds of content for NFL teams, so if you're not a Giants fan, don't worry. I'll cover your team. If I'm not covering your team, let me know, and have a good one.